The tutorial begins from the first minute and 43rd second. Now I will demonstrate the possibilities of Apple shortcuts. Hey! Today, I want to show how I quickly create digital planners for GoodNotes using my custom PowerPoint tab. First of all, I want to start with how I create hyperlinks for Apple shortcuts. To start, I want to show you how it works. I opened November and chose 29th date. On the top of each daily page, I have an Apple shortcuts icon. Let's click on it and press yes. As you can see, after clicking on Apple Calendar, the event date is immediately filled and matches the date opened in the planner with the default time set to 12 o'clock. Now, I'll open Google Calendar. As you can see, the date is already filled here as well. Now, let's choose a reminder. First, enter the reminder text, then choose the list to add the reminder to and enter the date and time. Unfortunately, it's physically impossible, in my opinion, to create a shortcut for creating a reminder on the same day due to the limited functionality of the shortcuts app. Users will have to manually enter the date and time each time. That's all for now. Let's now understand how it all works. In my Shortcuts app, I've created the following shortcut and named it after my store. If you decide to purchase my custom tab for PowerPoint, it comes with this shortcut. You can rename it to your store's name or any other title you prefer. I won't go into detail on how I created it, as you'll be able to acquire it, but I'll show you how it looks inside. Now, let's move on to PowerPoint. Firstly, I want to emphasize that this custom tab works on both Windows and Mac seamlessly. The only difference is the process of adding this tab on different operating systems, which requires different steps. For Mac users, all the instructions will be provided in this video, and for Windows users, the complete guide will be available in another video, the link to which will be in the description. To add the custom tab, or as these files are called, PowerPoint add-ins, you need to click on Tools in the top menu and choose PowerPoint add-ins. Click the plus sign, select the file you'll receive after purchase. In the pop-up window, choose Enable Macros, and in the following window, click Turn Off and then OK. My planner is structured with a monthly page first, followed by weekly pages, and then daily pages. I'll open January 1st, 2024, and go to the Insert tab, select Pictures, and then Picture from File. I'll add a pre-prepared icon in the form of an Apple Shortcuts app. The link to the icon is in the video description and available for download. I want to mention that the icon's format is EMF because, in my opinion, it's the only format that allows exporting the planner to PDF with good quality and without any PowerPoint errors. Unfortunately, planners with SVG icons didn't export to PDF due to PowerPoint errors. Let's place the icon in the top right corner and adjust the size. On the Home tab, I clicked on Arrange and selected Selection Pane. The selection pane is a menu that displays all elements on the slide, except those on the master slide. As you can see on this slide, I have three elements, the date, the week, and our icon. Important! This icon needs to be renamed to the word shortcut in uppercase letters. If this is not done, the entire process will not give any results, so let's rename the icon. The next step is to copy this icon to all pages of the January month. Importantly, all pages of January or any other month should be arranged sequentially, one after another. If there are other pages in between, the links to the Apple shortcut won't match the dates. Traditionally, in PowerPoint, it's impossible to copy an element with just one click, but now it is possible. The first step is to understand which element from which page we need to copy to which pages. So, we need to copy the image named shortcut from page number 16 to pages from the 17th to the page number 46. 
Let's switch to the custom tab self set and click on the copy anything by name button. The first prompt we received is enter the source slide number. The page where our icon is located is slide number 16. The next question is enter the start slide to which to copy the element. We enter slide number 17. The following question is enter the end slide to which to copy the element. We enter slide number 46. The last question is enter the shape name. Here, we can enter the name of any element, shape, table, photo, or anything else. But right now, we are interested in copying the element with the name shortcut. So, we enter shortcut in uppercase letters. In just 10 seconds, we copied the element to 30 pages instead of manual copying. The penultimate step in creating hyperlinks to Apple Shortcuts is to open the Shortcuts app and, assuming you have purchased this tab and my shortcut, right-click on the shortcut and select Rename. Let's name it Your Store. Now, let's go back to the PowerPoint. The final step in creating hyperlinks to Apple Shortcuts is to press the Hyperlinks to Apple Shortcuts button. The first question prompts you to enter the start slide number. Enter the slide where the date is January 1st, which is slide number 16. The next question in the pop-up window is to enter the end slide number. Enter slide number 46, where the date is January 31st. The following question is to enter the shortcut name. Since the current name is your store, enter your store here. The last question is the initial date from which we start creating hyperlinks. Any date can be entered here, both past and future. This button is universal for a long time. You can enter the date using two templates as shown in the pop-up window. Let's enter 1 slash 1 slash 2024. And that's it. We've created hyperlinks for the entire month in just a few seconds. Now, all we need to do is copy the shortcut icon to all the other months and repeat the process of adding hyperlinks 11 more times. It will take no more than 10 minutes but will give your planners a unique feature. If you want to learn about the functionality of the custom tab right away, follow the link in the description to access a text document that details the possibilities and limitations of each tab. Let's imagine that we've created hyperlinks throughout the planner, and now all that's left is to save the file as a PDF. The bad news is that on Mac, after saving the file in PDF format, hyperlinks don't work. Fortunately, there is no such issue on Windows. I've tried dozens of different options, and the best ones are as follows. Copying the file to another laptop with a Windows operating system and saving it there, or installing a virtual machine on a MacBook with Windows 11. Personally, I use the UTM virtual machine, but you can choose any of these options. Now that we've figured out how to create hyperlinks for Apple shortcuts and how to save files, I will demonstrate the capabilities of other buttons using specific examples. Detailed information about the capabilities of the buttons is available at the link provided in the description. First and foremost, I want to point out that the functions of these buttons are limited to elements located on regular slides. These buttons do not work on master slides and do not change anything on them. We've covered how to create hyperlinks for Apple shortcuts. Now, let's dive into the buttons located in the group on the right called Copying and Deleting Elements. We've already used the bottom button. Copy anything by name button can copy any element to any range of pages. The requirements are to specify the page where the element is located, the pages to copy the element to, and the name of the element. Above it is the Delete Anything by Name button. This button is very useful if you need to delete a specific element within a certain range. For example, let's say I want to create a planner in a pink theme and want to change the color of the Apple Shortcuts icon to pink. Since I already have a beige planner, I simply duplicated it and now want to change the design. Let's delete the Apple Shortcuts icon on all slides where it exists so that I can recreate it in pink later. To do this, let's press the Delete Anything by Name button. In the pop-up window, we received the prompt Enter the Start Slide. The first shortcut icon is on slide 16, so I enter slide 16. 
The next question is, enter the end slide. It's important to note that you can enter any slide, even the last one in the presentation. This button will delete the element only on the slides where it exists. Therefore, I enter slide 500 to delete the element in this range. The last question is, enter the name of the element to be deleted. I enter the word shortcut, as specified in the selection pane. That's how, in a few seconds, we deleted the element named shortcut on almost 500 pages. The last button is delete everything on range. This button is useful if you want to delete all elements in a specific range, except for those on master slides. Let's click on it and enter slide 16 through 46. That's it. We have deleted all elements in this extensive range except those on the master slides. To demonstrate the functionality of the next button, I open the February page. The group of buttons in the middle is called Creating Hyperlinks. I will now demonstrate the function of the Hyperlinks to Text in Tables button. Before clicking on this button, I paid attention to the following details. The table with dates is named Table February, and I want to know in advance on which slide February 1st starts. As we can see, February 1st is on slide 56. Now, I go back to the month page and click on the hyperlink to tables button. The first question in the pop-up window is, enter the slide index where the table is located. I enter slide 47. The next question is, enter the starting target slide index. Here, I need to enter the slide to which the first cell in the table, which is not empty, should have a hyperlink. The first non-empty cell is cell number 4 in the first row, which should have a hyperlink to slide 56. So, I enter the number 56. Next, I need to enter the name of the table to which the hyperlink should be created, as there may be multiple tables on slide 47. I enter the table name from the selection pane, which is Table February. The last question is enter the increment step for the target slide index. In 99% of cases, the answer is the number 1. This means that if the first non-empty cell in the table has a hyperlink to slide 56, the increment step for the next non-empty cell should be 1. Since I don't have any other slides between the daily pages, I always enter an increment step of 1 slide and click OK. In this way, we created hyperlinks for the entire month in just 15 seconds. Now, let's highlight the text and change the color from blue to the text color in the planner. Now, I want to demonstrate the button called Hyperlinks to Shapes. I changed the February page and now it contains shapes instead of a table with dates. Pay attention! I renamed the shapes that don't have dates to no name because I don't want to create hyperlinks to them. The shapes to which I want to create hyperlinks are named from 1 to 29. In reality, it doesn't matter whether you name them from 1 to 29, you can name them from 51 to 79 or any other range. But it's important that each shape that should have a link to the next slide from the previous one has the next consecutive number. So, I named them from 1 to 29 and click the Hyperlinks to Shapes button. Traditionally, I enter the slide number where the shapes to which I want to create hyperlinks are located, which is slide 47. The next question is enter the starting shape index. Here, I enter shape 1, as we need to create hyperlinks starting from shape number 1. The next question is enter the ending shape index. Here, I enter the name of the last shape on the slide, which is name 29. Next, I need to enter the slide for which to create hyperlinks in shape 1. I enter slide 56, and I enter the increment step 1. That's it. We created hyperlinks to 29 shapes in just a few seconds. Also, on this tab, there's a button hyperlinks to text inside of shapes and text boxes. This button performs the same function but creates hyperlinks directly to the text inside shapes or to the text elements, not to the entire shape. I won't dwell on this because the functionality is identical. To conclude, let me explain the functions of the group of buttons on the left. These buttons will change the color of the particular type of elements within a specified range. Before we proceed, let's imagine that we want to change the color scheme of the planner to a pink. For this, I created a square and chose the pink color.
Then, I selected Fill, More Fill Colors, and chose the RGB sliders in the second tab. At the bottom, I see the hexadecimal name of the color and copy it. Now, I'll demonstrate the functionality of the Shape Fill button. It asks for the start and end slides and the color number. After this, all shapes in the specified range change their fill color to the one we indicated. The next button, Shapes Outline, checks within the specified range if the shapes have an outline, and if they do, it changes it to the color we specified. The Line Outline button changes the color of all lines within the specified range. The next button, Font Fill Inside Text Boxes, changes the text color within text boxes in the specified range. The font fill inside text boxes and shapes button does exactly the same but also changes the color of text inside shapes. The last button that changes font color is font fill in tables. This button changes the text color in all tables within the range. To demonstrate the functionality of the last button called cell fill, I open my undated planner. On page number 16, I have a table with numbers from 1 to 31. Additionally, I have the next 30 slides where this table is not exist yet. I quickly create hyperlinks in this table to the slides and copy it. After this, I would like to change the color of the corresponding day when clicked. For this, I click the cell fill button. I specify the starting slide where the table named, table January, is, which is slide number 16, and the last slide, which is slide number 46. I specify the name of the table, the row number. Since I only have one row here, I enter number 1, but if you have more rows and want to change the fill color on another row, then enter the row where you need to change the fill color. I specify the prepared hexadecimal color. And that's it. I changed the fill color in one cell, on slide 16 to 46, with the fill color changing on each subsequent slide by one cell to the right in the first row. In this way, I created the effect of a real button press. That's all. The documentation for this tab is in the description. I want to emphasize that the tab may fail or work differently if the data is not entered according to the standards. For this, be sure to use the instructions to avoid errors. I hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed the functionality of the custom tab, you can follow the link in the description and purchase it on Etsy. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments or message me on Etsy, and I'll do my best to provide answers.